In a small town just north of São Paulo, Brazil, one of the most horrifying poltergeist events in history is about to unfold. The year is 1965 and the Ferreira family household, having just awakened, is baffled. Several large stones are lying on the floor throughout the house. The stones had not been there when the family had gone to bed the night before. After questioning the children and checking the doors and windows, the family had no idea how the rocks got into the house. Puzzled, they gathered the rocks and placed them outside. Within minutes, the rocks, much to the dismay of the family, appeared back inside the house. Much to the amazement of everyone, the strange activity continued. Rocks, and sometimes bricks, would be found throughout the house, some as large as eight pounds. By now, the police were involved, but were just as baffled. On one occasion, an officer called to the house had just thrown out a sizable rock when another fell from the ceiling landing at his feet. He would later describe it as appearing out of thin air as if by magic. By now the townspeople had flocked to witness the poltergeist commotion. As interest grew, the activity took on a new dimension. It began to focus solely on the 11-year-old daughter, Maria. The poltergeist would inexplicably leave gifts at young Maria's feet. It became so prevalent that Maria would whisper that she wanted flowers or sweets, and they would magically appear at her feet, seemingly out of thin air. Fruit, and even in one instance, jewelry, were presented by the spirit. As time went on, the events no longer just happened while Maria was at home, but followed her all over town, even while at school. Hundreds witnessed the paranormal appearance of gifts, including politicians, police officers, military, and even the clergy but no one could explain how or why this was happening. For a year, the activities continued until one day in 1967, the spirit stopped leaving gifts and instead turned to violence. Stones from the street, as if by an invisible hand, would be hurled at Maria. Eggs would appear out of thin air, striking the young girl. At first, people thought it was someone jealous of the attention Maria was receiving, but the violence would even happen inside locked rooms, in front of witnesses. Rocks, eggs, plates, even a propane tank appeared out of thin air to the dismay of bystanders flying through the air, striking poor Maria. The activity even plagued her while she slept. Cups and bowls would mysteriously appear, covering her mouth in an attempt to thwart her breathing. Church members would hold nightly vigils in her room while she slept so they could remove the items from her face. Over time, the violence was no longer restricted to the use of objects. Bruises, scratches, and even bite marks soon began to mysteriously appear on her body. The family, fearful for Maria's health, turned to the church who performed an exorcism, but to no avail. Instead, as if angered by the ritual, the spirit escalated the violence. Over the course of the next few weeks, pins and sewing needles began appearing embedded under Maria's skin. Doctors, not believing the story of a malevolent spirit, thought that Maria was doing this to herself until they witnessed the phenomenon firsthand. During a visit to the doctor for a routine exam, Maria's ankle began to swell up before their eyes. She screamed in agony as perplexed doctors began removing over 50 needles from underneath her skin. No matter where she was, Maria was not safe from the poltergeist. One day at school, Maria was eating her lunch in the corner, isolated from others due to the violence that surrounded her. She bit into her sandwich when she felt something on her arm. As she looked down, she saw her clothes burst into flames. Teachers quickly extinguished the fire, but they could not quell the fear of the children who witnessed the horror. The danger followed Maria home that day, as inexplicably one of the bedrooms in her house caught fire and destroyed everything in it. By now, with so many witnesses stepping forward, the nation was well aware of Maria's plight and began to clamor for famed Brazilian psychic and medium Chico Xavier to intervene. In a live public event, Mr. Xavier met with Maria. With the eyes of the nation watching, he went into his famed trance to make contact with the spirit world. While in his trance, he declared to onlookers the reason behind the vicious attacks. He claimed that Maria had been a witch in a previous life, one that practiced black magic. Her actions harmed many, even killing one person, according to the psychic. The poltergeist was determined to make Maria suffer, he said, just as she had made others suffer in her previous life. While the Brazilian public was split on whether this was the reason for the haunting, united they focused their thoughts and prayers on Maria in an attempt to rid the poor girl of her unseen tormentor. After five years of terror, the violence was finally about to end. Maria came home from school, opened a can of soda as she did every day, and took a drink. It would be her last. For the soda was laced with pesticides, killing her in seconds. With no witnesses to Maria's death, the coroner ruled it as a suicide, claiming, Maria's torment was so well documented that it's perfectly understandable as to why she would want to end her life. 
To this day, many do not believe that Maria took her own life, even though they can sympathize with her pain. Instead, they believe the poltergeist finally got its revenge. With Maria's untimely death, the paranormal activity immediately ended, but her story remains one of the most enigmatic in history.